Now, this showed up on the 700 Club, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the craziness of Pat Robertson, because I've already done that in the past. A lot of people think that Pat is a little bit deluded due to his advanced age, but you have to remember, he's been doing this for a very long time, and he's always been this crazy. After all, the Christian Broadcasting Network got its start in 1960 when Pat was just 30 years old. I don't think you could accuse them of suffering of late-onset delusions from that early on. Anyhow, Pat tends to get a lot of the real religious crazies on his show, and this time, Christian author Jonathan Kahn tells him that two cows, Kim Davis, and gay rights are all signs of God's impending wrath. Really? God is going to smite us any time now. He's serious. Just you wait. So let's take a look at more religious craziness that proves that God is going to kill us all. Pretty soon now. Really. This is going to be, this is far out, but this is good. And that, that is that there's a sign, Pat, that God gave uh, of the first warning of an economic fall, in a sense. The first cycle is actually in Genesis, when you have seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. The sign, the warning he gave was a, the, the dream to Pharaoh of seven cows, each one is a year, and then seven bad cows, each one is a year. So you got the number seven, you got the, the, the figure of a cow. Now, here's, here's a, a far out thing. What happened is, last September, a cow was born, literally. Oh no, a cow was born. Literally. As opposed to figuratively. And exactly how many cows do you think are born every year? It's hard to get a real accurate number, but according to the USDA, nearly 42 million cattle are slaughtered in the US for food every year, and there are more than 9 million dairy cows. If we assume that they're not slaughtering more than they're replacing, and that for the dairy cattle, we assume half are female and thus must produce a calf every year to continue giving milk, that gives us a roundabout figure of 46.5 million cows born each and every year in the United States, much higher worldwide, of course. So keep that in mind as he continues. The AP, not a Christian organization, yeah. takes the image of that cow, spreads it across America, and I think they have that image. That image of the cow is a cow literally born with a number seven on its there head. It is. On its seven on its head. The AP rele goes across America, released her, and it happened. What day? September 25th. That's released. That's the opening day of the Shemitah, the sign of the seventh year on the opening day. Now that now another cow was born in Texas, okay. and, and as a Christian farmer, the calf give the, the calf is born. It's a red heifer. Something strange about the red heifer and I have a picture of that there that is a second cow with a number seven born on the same day september 25th the opening day of the shemitah this is the biblical sign now i have to explain what a shemitah is according to the torah it's the seventh year in the agricultural cycle that was commanded to be observed in the land of israel of course neither of these cows were born in israel but don't let that get in the way of a good story told to gullible people but cows are born all the time with unusual designs. There are many cows born with heart shapes on their heads. This is hardly limited to cows, though. You can find lots of animals, such as this goat with a cross on its forehead, which you'd think would get the Christians frothing at the mouth much more than a number. And for horses, you have one here with a clear horse on its side, and another that just says horse. And let's not forget Minnie Moo, the cow famously purchased by the Walt Disney Company, born with Mickey Mouse ears on her side. Sorry, I'm just not impressed with two cows with what looks like a number on their foreheads, especially since the second one, the red heifer, isn't particularly convincing. Now, the, th now, the thing is that in, in 1973, you had the Shemitah that led to a different kind of fall. You had not only economy, you had actually, you had a, a, a spiritual fall. America legalizes the killing of its unborn children. This, yeah. is, this is major. And where were the numerical cows in 1973? Wasn't God angry then? Why didn't he send a bovine sign? Because there's nothing we can identify as God's wrath that came along afterwards. It was just business as usual for the United States. What makes this year any different? This year, 2015, has been just as significant. Something very major has happened. This is very significant. And that is, in the Bible, you know, one of the signs that precedes judgment is the, the act of desecration. Uh, Ezekiel's taken to the temple of God, and he's shown idols all over the yeah, temple, and yeah. God says judgment's coming. In, in Daniel's in Babylon, the king says, we're going to take the vessels of the temple of Jerusalem, That's the true. holy vessels, and we're going to drink from them, get, and we're going to drink to the gods. At that moment, the hand appears, handwriting on the wall, 
this night is judgment. So the act of desecration precedes judgment. Desecration to take something made for God, to turn it against its purposes, and turn it against God. Well, another vessel holy of, de of consecration is marriage. Of marriage is of God. It is His vessel. If you take that vessel and you turn it against its purposes and turn it against God's purposes, it's an act of desecration. If 2015 is just as significant as 1973, we're all fine because nothing really happened. We didn't suffer any identifiable wrath that we didn't easily recover from. The economy goes up and the economy goes down. If you're going to call the downturn in 1973 to 1974 a sign from God, then what did the 2008 economic crash mean? And why did we easily recover if we never outlawed abortion? We're at record highs in the stock market. Apparently God isn't too concerned. And honestly, these people have no sense of history. Marriage has nothing to do with God's. It's been a way to ensure heirs and to control property and inheritance rights. That is, at least up until modern times. Women were chattel, mere baby-making machines with little or no import, and when it comes to the Bible, lots of our favorite Bible heroes had multiple wives plus concubines. That's traditional marriage, but I don't hear a lot of fundamentalists whining that we changed marriage when we went away from that definition, do you? About two months ago, America crossed the line. The Supreme Court strikes down marriage as we know it. Right. Act of desecration. All across America, this is celebrated with a sign of the rainbow. The rainbow doesn't belong to man or an organization of man. Mm -hmm. The rainbow, it belongs to God. It is his holy, holy vessel. Right. And yet to take the rainbow and use that as a celebration of this first desecration is a double desecration. Now, wait a minute. The rainbow is supposed to be a sign that God will never again throw a temper tantrum and murder almost all humans because he didn't get his way. So, if you're going to take this whole God nonsense seriously, wouldn't using a rainbow make a lot of sense as a reminder to God? I mean, hey dude, you promised. Don't be a dick. And then that night, Pat, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, remember with, with Babylon, it happens in the palace, the highest house of yeah, Babylon yeah. on the wall. Well, that night, the White House, the highest house in the right. land, puts up the sign of the rainbow on, oh, the, the, right. the, literally, the White House becomes a vessel of desecration celebrating this. This is a triple desecration. And what is the rainbow? The rainbow is a sign of God's covenant. Mm -hmm. It's a sign linked to judgment and mercy. And so to twist that, to, to, to turn that on its head, it, how much more can we do to provoke God in this hour? And so here we have here, and you know, you know, they have the handwriting in Babylon. Now you have the handwriting appears on the White House, on the walls of the White House, in the color of the rainbow. So the rainbow is a sign of mercy. Well, I can go with that. The mercy of the American people on minorities, giving them equal rights and protection under the law. Now, if we're going to stick with Jonathan's story, God promised vengeance that exact night. But the White House went tutti fruity colored months ago. Nobody got struck down. Everybody woke up the next morning and realized that the nation hadn't turned into Sodom and Gomorrah. There aren't dogs and cats living in sin. We haven't sunk into mass hysteria. In fact, everything was exactly the same the day gay marriage was legalized as it was the day before. Except some people were a little bit happier than they were. The walls haven't started bleeding. Everything is still fine. But these religious nutballs have to keep saying, it's coming. Really, it's coming and then find some way around it when nothing actually happens. You have to remember that Pat Robertson himself declared in a May 1980 broadcast of the 700 Club where he said, I guarantee that by the end of 1982, there's going to be a judgment on the world. Well, it didn't happen. And when it didn't happen, he had to backpedal and rationalize why it didn't happen. Here's the answer. He's an idiot. These people have been preaching gloom and doom for decades, and it never, ever ever happens. I wonder why anybody takes these people seriously. Mm -hmm. So this, and, and you say, how can we get any worse than that? We cross the line. Well, right now, there's a woman in jail now. Right. Now, you know, and this is another sign. In the, the Bible, you actually had, you know, before judgment came, you had prophets in jail. You had Jeremiah mm -hmm. in jail when the thing came. It's, it's a sign, you know, the prophets cried out. They said, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Right. Well, it's happening now. And so we hear, and they're calling her defiant. It's not, she's not defiant. It's America that's defiant. Mm -hmm. She, you know, woe to those who call obedience defiance and defiance right. obedience. So we are in a very dangerous period on top of the fact that the Shemitah is coming in, the, in this time. So I believe it's like a perfect storm, all these things coming together. The reason Kim Davis was in jail at the time of this show is because she was being defiant. She was defying a court order to do her job. She had appealed twice, 
once to a federal court and once to the Supreme Court, and both of them rejected her appeal. She was bound by her oath of office to do the job for which she had been elected, whether she liked it or not. Nowhere in her oath did it give her an out for religious objections. Nowhere did it say she only had to do the job if she felt like it. She was elected by the people of the county of Rowan, Kentucky to do a job whether she liked it or not. If she didn't think she could continue to do the job in good faith, she could have simply stepped down. But instead, she refused to do so. She violated her oath of office. She refused to do the job that she had promised to do and went to jail for defying a court order. This isn't imprisoning some prophet. This is putting a pissant little county clerk in jail because they refused to follow the dictates of the court and the job position for which she was elected. But hey, it's religious craziness. Let's just try to tie all of these things together Anything that we can find, whether it has anything to do with anything or not, so we can weave a convincing narrative and sell more books to the gullible rubes. That's how religion works. I'd ask why nobody calls these people on their bullshit, but they do. All the time. These crazy people just don't listen. They have no reason to get outside their comfort zone and deal with the real facts because they're just too inconvenient. They live in a fantasy world where their God reigns supreme and can do no wrong, and anything that they believe that disagrees with the real world, well, the real world has to be wrong. That's insanity talking. It's religious delusion from end to end, and these people are simply incapable of recognizing the concentrated stupid that falls out of their mouths. They don't have to. They have an audience that laps it up, and that's even more pathetic the longer it goes on. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the religious crazy and my responses. If you have any comments, put them below. Send in any reasonable length videos that you want me to take on or news stories that you want my examination. And while you're at it, why not take a run over to my blog where I talk about these topics all the time or listen to my podcast, which is even more the same. Spread the word and let me know what you think. I care and respond, unlike most of these religious crazies. See you again next time.